Hello, we're talking with Lisa Guernsey, the director at uh, New America on Early Education. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. Of the Early Education Initiative. Early Education Initiative. And uh, Lisa, you've got a great new report out called Subprime Learning. Yes, yeah, Subprime Learning, Early Education in America Since the Great Recession. And we looked at 2009 to 2013, collected a lot of different pieces of data to try and understand what have we been doing for five years? How far have we come and where are the gaps that still need to be filled? And you're looking across a number of different dimensions. I, can you just yeah, share so what some we of those? Have, we have data points in the report that look at some, some student achievement data, what we can find, which is for older children. We have information about family well-being and what we can discern there, and, and that's not looking good at all. The families have been really suffering for the past five years. We look at policies across the birth through third grade spectrum to find out what's been changing in the policy landscape. And we have been looking at access to preschool, access to full day kindergarten, um, access to good teaching, and looking for indicators that that might have expanded in any way for young kids. Great, and I think there, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, there may be a short good story around 2009 when there were stimulus dollars That's related right. to early education, however. Yeah, so 2009 <laughs> was, um, although it was a really tough year in terms of it being the you know, height of the recession, it was a, a good year from the standpoint of federal funding because the 2009 stimulus bill that was passed in Congress that February of that year led to a boost in funding. It was really um, in some part to, to make sure that states that were kind of cratering were able to fill in some gaps and not have to kind of do mass layoffs in their early education programs and in their schools. So that was good news. Um, and it did lead to some also some infrastructure building, helping data systems get started, things like that. After that, it's been pretty much a flat line. Um, there have, uh, we've been kind of tracking federal funding and looking at the up and down nature of what's happening in state funding. And, uh, and for the most part, we've either kind of stagnated or seen a couple of bumps here and there in some states, but um, even seen some declines and some backsliding in other states. What do you hope that New America will accomplish with, with this report, how it will be used in leading future conversations in early learning? This report was um, actually spurred by the Alliance for Early Success, a, a coalition um, of, uh, of funders that are trying to assess kind of what's the state of the landscape right now. So what we're hoping is this will help us take stock and say, okay, this is what we've been doing for five years so that we can now turn our attention to what we need to do. So it's the first in a series of two reports, and the next one will come out in the spring. Ah. And it's going to, you know, using this data on how stagnant, essentially, things have been when it comes to access for more children to, um, to be able to be part of early learning opportunities. Given that, now what should we do? Where do we need to prioritize? What are the strategies that are going to make the most sense? How do we make sure that we're not making things worse? Because we actually saw some widening of achievement gaps for low-income um, mm -hmm. families, in fact. So we need to see how to change the game a little bit. Anything on the horizon you could point to that we should be aware of from um, your report? Well, certainly we have a couple of um, points in there that people may not have been thinking about too much before. Um, we talk about what's been ignored. And one of the um, areas that we point to is dual language learners. Uh, so we have a growing population of children who are speaking English, um, are, are being expected to speak English at school, but their households and their families are not speaking English at home. And they have the opportunity actually to grow up bilingual but our policies are ignoring that possibility and, in fact, making things harder for them. So we show that that's an, an area that needs a lot more attention. We also show that um, the use of technology to help teachers, to curate materials, to enhance professional development, that that area has been pretty much ignored in policy in the early years and that that needs some more attention. And we are seeing some signs in some states since 2013 that there is um, a desire to try to rebuild funding where it had fallen back. So there are some states that are saying, ooh, this is not a good five years. Let's try to expand our programs, or let's at least fill in where we've, we've left off. Wonderful. Well, Lisa, thank you very much, uh, and New America, for this report. And I look forward to the new one in the spring as well. Yes. Wish you great luck with your upcoming event. Thanks so much, Scott. Thank you, Lisa. Appreciate the chance.